did exponentials and then we did the word problems in exponential, I said to you guys, you have to do y1, y2 to get a common base until we learn logs, and then you can do it that way. Today's the day. Today's the day. Okay, so if we look at this one, 9x plus 1 equals 27, how would we normally have solved it? Common base. So we would go 3 to the 2 x, uh oh, did I push the button? Yeah, it's blinking. Okay, 3 to the 2, x plus 1 equals 3 to the 3. Then we distribute 3 to the 2, x plus 2 equals 3 to the 3. And then we go 2, x plus 2 equals 3. Subtract our 2. We get 2x equals 1. x equals a half. Could we always check these with y1, y2? Can we always check them by plugging it back in and see if left side equals right side? Yeah. So, remember with logs, when we had logs and you had an x beside or an x in the base, what did I tell you to do to always solve them? If you had a log with an x beside it or an x in the base, what did you always do? You change it to exponential, right? So that's why we learned to change to exponential, right? Well, today we're going to change some of them to logs. If we have two bases with one exponent, you can change it to a log. If you have two bases with two exponents, you can't. Okay? So if I want to go change this to a log and solve it instead, because I have two bases, one of them having an exponent, what do we do? We do log of what? What's my base? 9, because the base of my exponent becomes the base of my log, and then what's with it doesn't stay with it. So we get 27, and it equals x plus 1. And then what can we do? Subtract 1. And we get log 9, 27, minus 1 equals x. And if you're someone who's going to try and minus that 1 from the 27, put it in brackets so you don't go 26. Now, you don't need a calculator at all at this point. You guys can do this. How can we do this? 9 to what power is 27? Go log 27 divided by log 9, see what you get. Or the log base button. So remember, we can do it this way if we want to as well. What do we get? 1.5. 1 1.5 1 is 3 over 2, right? So if we actually took 9, the square root of 9 would be 3, cubed is 27. So 3 over 2 actually does work. Because 9 to what power is 27? 9 to 3 over 2. 9 to 3 over 2. Because what's that? It's the square root of 9 cubed. So you could have actually done it without your calculator, right? And 1.5 minus 1? x equals 0.5. Now we could check it. Well, we kind of checked it indirectly because we did it two ways. But we could check it with y1, y2, or we could plug it back into the original and see if it works out. All right. Bless you. So that one I could do common base. But remember we said sometimes we can't do common base, and then we had to y1, y2 to this point because we couldn't do anything else. Well, now we can. 4 to the x equals 12. Can I make them a common base? Two bases, one exponent. So what can I do? Change it to a log. So what am I going to get, guys? Log base 4, because the base of my exponent becomes the base of my log, with the 12 beside it, because what's with it doesn't stay with it, and it always equals the exponent. Now, we could go log base 4 of 12, but if you don't have the calculator with the log base, and plus we want to, be able to remember to be able to do this, you can go log 12 divided by log 4, right? We don't want to just log base and forget that that rule exists. It's even on our formula sheet. So what do we get? x equals 
Sorry, what, Taya? 1.8, we agree, disagree? Yeah. I forgot to give you your boards. Remember the boards, then I can actually see what you're saying. I'm trying to decipher with what you're saying. <laughs> okay. What's with B? What's the problem with B? I uh, can't switch it to base, the common base. I have three bases in one exponent. Could I do something to maybe get two bases in one exponent? Yeah, divide by that 19.2. And the only reason why I can do that, guys, is this 19.2 doesn't have an exponent on it. If the 19.2 was to t, I couldn't divide it over. Then I have to do a totally different method. So I can do this because I can divide it over. Now, would we ever go 11 divided by 19.2 and round it? No. That's just so illegal and wrong. We never, never round till when? The end. Okay. So we're going to carry this. We're going to have log base what now? Because now we can do it. What's my base? 0 0.91. And what's beside it? 11 divided by 19.2. And what is it equal? 5.9. Everyone agree? Disagree? Yeah? You try C. You do C. So everyone divided the 150 over, which is 2. And then you got log base 1.4 of 2 equaled T. And T equaled 2.1. So now every single word problem you could do this way that we've dealt with, right? All the word problems we've dealt with so far, you could do this way. Because we always just take this initial value and divide it over. That's exactly what we did here, right? So that's why I tell you to divide that initial value over for two reasons. One was so that your window wasn't crazy. And two was so that, why? You could do this. OK. All right, so we're fine when we have one base, one exponent, or two bases, sorry, with one exponent. But what happens when we have two bases and two exponents? Can we convert it to a log? No. So we're going to do a different method. So we have two bases, two exponents, and we can't make those bases common. If we can make those bases common, we do common base, move on, right? But we don't have that option. So what we have to do is we're going to follow these little rules. We're going to take the log of both sides, because as long as you do the same to one side as you do to the other side, we're fine, right? So log 5 to the 3x equals log 3 to the 2x minus 1. Remember with equations, as long as you make the sides equal, you're fine. You can add stuff to one side as long as you add it to the other side, because then it's still equal. You have to do that in order for it to be an equation that's equal. From yesterday, what could possibly help us at this point? What did you say, Kira? You can put it to the front. You can use power rule, right? So we can take this and we can drop it in front. So we get 3x log 5 equals, and I'm going to put this in brackets, 2x minus 1 log 3. So we're applying the laws of logs. We're basically applying the power rule. Now, I told you before, if you have log 2x plus 1, can I distribute that? No. Because this is like saying log of a value, right? Just like saying sine. If I had sine of 30, or if I had sine of 2 times 30 plus y, let's say, could I distribute into that with the sine? No, in trig you couldn't. You can't do it with logs either, okay? However, if I had something in front of sine or cos or tan, could I take this and distribute it in? Yes, and you can do that with logs as well. You just can't distribute in because this is a value. This is log of something, okay? You can't just distribute it, all right? But we can distribute this way. So we're going to have 3x log 5 equals 2x log 3. 
minus 1 log 3. Ultimately, when it says solve in any place in math, what is it asking you to do? Find x. Solve for x. Find out what the heck x is. So ultimately, you would have to usually isolate for x in the end, correct? This thing flies up all the time. I need elf ears. Okay. I'm going to get extensions, ear extensions. I've said I'm going to. I need them. Seriously. I didn't know I had tiny ears until I had this thing. Tiny ears. Okay. So we want to solve for x. So what should we do, maybe? Possibly. Put your hand up so I could hear. <laughs> this is why I need the boards. Because it's I have really good hearing and I seriously can't hear you. Yeah? Move everything to one side, set equal to zero would be kind of okay. It would be okay to do, but it wouldn't help us. Yeah? Yeah. Move the one that has the x over to the other side. You can move this one over. You could do that, um, but then you'd have them all to one side. So ultimately what we're going to do is get the terms of the variable on the same side. So we have 3x log 5, and this is a positive 2x log 3, so I'm going to subtract it. And it's going to equal negative log 3. Could I have moved this 3x over and moved the log over here? Yeah, it doesn't matter which way you go. That's just more steps, but you can do it. Now, this is where people get to this on the test, and then I have like some crazy math going on, like some craziness happens at this point. So this is one term. This is another term. All I'm asking you at this point, and this is the reason why you get the x's to the one side, is now both terms have an x in them, right? So what could I take out of both of those terms? An x. That's why you get only the x's to one side, because now I have two terms. This is like 3 times x times log 5. This is 2 times x times log 3. And I can GCF an x out of both of them. If I could take out more, would I? Would it be helpful to do that? No. It wouldn't be helpful. You could, but it wouldn't be helpful to you. So I would just take an x out. And then you're left with 3 log 5 from the first term minus 2 log 3 from the second term. And it equals negative log 3. Now I have x times this. So how could I get x by itself? Divide. Now, if they wanted the answer to the nearest hundredth, if I wanted the answer to the nearest hundredth, I could just go plug it into my calculator. But what would I have to make sure I do if I'm going to plug it all in my calculator at once? Brackets. The moment you have a binomial, two terms, or a trinomial, or anything more than a monomial, it needs to be in brackets. So I just over bracket, and I bracket both of them. So type that in and get me in the nearest hundredth, and then we're going to go through the extra steps in order to get it as an exact answer. Because sometimes it's not just asked to the hundredth. Remember I told you the hard part of logs is getting the answer to match what they have? Not that you don't know what you're doing, but to match what they have as the answer. So everyone got x equals negative 0 0.42? Okay. Now, that's great if they ask the nearest hundredth. This is where it gets a little bit harder because you, they want it as an exact value. So they want it as one log, and you can actually make this be one log. Okay, so we're going to follow up. So we have x equals negative log 3 divided by 3 log 5 minus 2 log 3. What base do all of these logs have? 10. So ultimately, we're going to be able to put them together, right? 
So this top one, I can bring this up as an exponent, right? So I can go x equals log 3 to the negative 1. The bottom, I can write as log 5 cubed minus log 3 squared. Yeah? And remember I told you if it's base 10, you're going to, sometimes you won't spot it instantly. You can put it together. But if it was like all base 2s, you can spot it really easily. Because you're like, why are they all the same base? So, most people can get to this spot. Most people can get to the next spot. And then the last step they forget. So, what's 3 to the negative 1? One third. And then we have log 125 minus log 9. What could I do next? You can use that division rule, right? Quotient rule. And you can put them together because they have the same base. So we're going to get log what? 125 over 9, yeah. Everyone's good to hear, and then they leave it here. Or they do subtracting, or they do some other stuff. You can't subtract because there's a log in the top and there's a log in the bottom. So you can't use the quotient rule. You can only use the quotient rule when you have one log. Change of base, yes. So the change of base is when you have log A, B. That may have been cheating, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> log. Everyone remembers it this way. This is log B divided by log A, right? We can write log B, log A as log AB, can we not? We have the same thing here. We have log one third and log this. We can write it back together, can we not? So we can go X equals log. What's my base? craziness, 125 over 9, but it's there. And then beside it is one third. Yeah. Yeah, just on the formula sheet. You're right. So do you see, there's the rules that I told you. Everyone remembers to put together as multiplication. Everyone remembers to put together as division. Everyone forgets to separate as addition. Everyone forgets to separate as subtraction. Everyone forgets that you can make these logs be this way. Everyone is really go good going this direction, right? So you have to remember that the equal sign on those formulas mean that it can go both ways, right? This way or this way, yeah? All right. So wouldn't it be nice if they just asked us for the hundredth? Yes, we're done there. If not, we have to keep going, OK? What's the difference here? This one has two exponents, so I can't change it to a log base. But it has how many bases? Three. So if you can't, if it has more than one exponent and you can't change it to a log, you have to log both sides. It's not an option. It doesn't matter that it has an extra base. You have to log both sides. But there is one extra step because it has an extra base. OK? The moment we get one of these questions, it's standard of excellence. So, I'm taking that one. Duct tape. I'm doing just straight facing me, and I'm talking about duct tape in my ears. That's funny. There, I got some laughs. Okay, log two times three to the x equals log six x plus one. B. The first step is the important one. And if you can get the first step, so after this one, I guess that would be the second step. If you can get the second step right, you will do this question perfectly. If you forget the second step, crazy, crazy math comes out. Now remember, can I y1, y2 this to check my answer? Yes. When can I y1, y2? Whenever I have one variable. If I have two variables, can I y1, y2? I can y1, y2 the moment I have two variables. So can I check this? Yes. If they said Joe Schmo did this the wrong way and gave you a whole bunch of steps, could you check each step? Yes. There's good ways to check as well. 
It's always good to know it the right way, but there's always good ways to check. So here's the big, big step. What is happening beside this log? Ah. Yes, it's a log plus a log, exactly. I can't take this x and bring it in front. That's the bad math that happens. And then people tell me it's 6. Some crazy math happens. This x is only to the 3. I can't drop it in front of this log, which was the next step on the last one. I can't do that because the x is attached to the 3, and this 2 is not attached to that 3. So I have to use product rule first. If you get this step, you will every single one of you will get this question right. If you forget this step, every single one of you will get this question wrong. Okay, so realize this is a multiplication. So we're going to get log 2 plus log 3 to the x equals log 6 to the x plus 1. Now I want you to try it because I know you can do it. Try it. So when you look over here, guys, I would suggest you do this every time. When you take this binomial exponent and you bring it in front, put it in brackets so that you distribute. Okay? If it's a binomial exponent, bring it in front, put it in brackets so you remember to distribute it. Because honestly, that's the only error I'm seeing. Everyone else is doing everything else right. They're forgetting to distribute this. So you have to remember, once it catches up with me, that you have to distribute. So we're going to get log 2 plus x log 3 equals x log 6 plus 1 log 6. My 1s look like L's. It gets really confusing. Okay, get your x's to one side. Take out the x. And then we divide this over. What did you guys get as a decimal? Negative 1.5 or 6? Five? So six. Okay, then if we wanted to put it together the other way, we'd have to put the top together with division because there's a positive and a negative. So we get x equals log six divided by two. And then we'd have over log three divided by six. So x equals log three over log a half. So it's log a half three. And you could punch that in your calculator. You should get the same decimal, right? Yeah. What did I do? Yeah. So what did you get? Log what? So this is a good learning situation. They gave this as the diploma answer. Nothing they did, but they did. Like, let's pretend. You all got this. They gave this as the diploma answer, and you freak out because you're like, it's log um, A to the 3, and you're like, it's 1 third. What the heck? That just means they moved it to the wrong side. They moved it to the other side than you. You could go back and undo it, right? That's all that means. It doesn't mean freak out. It doesn't mean you're wrong. Or you could say, hey, um, 1 third is just a half here, and it's 3. Um, you could do it that way as well. You could move it yourself. Um, you could go 2 to the x equals 1 third and redo it. So just remember that the log can be moved to either side, right? They can be moved to either side. So you could get this answer or this answer, but when you plug them into your calculator, they, they are the exact same, right? Because one is just moved to one side and one is just moved to the other. And that happens in um, calculus as well when we do logs or any type of solving, you can because you can move them to one side or the other. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just telling you, don't freak out when it's like log base a half of A and you have log 2 and you're like, oh gosh. Doesn't mean you're wrong, you just move to the other side. Not a big deal. Okay? So that is the catch with logs that I've been telling you is it's the whole, um, not that it's hard, it's just that your answer might not be the exact one they got. How did they get it? Okay?
And if they have variables in theirs, and they say A and B is greater than 2, you could plug in something greater than 2, mark, check theirs, check yours as well. Um, some ways you can do that. Sometimes it's like numeric response where it's A, B, and you can't check it, right? You have to actually know how to do what you're doing. So there's all those ways to, to check it. Okay. Uh, 